bless you. Welcome to the Encounter Worship Experience here at Bethany Church, the Transformation Church of New Jersey. We hope that you enjoy this message, that it touches your spirit, begins a radical transformation and a life change in your life. We're getting ready to go to a powerful message from Bishop David Evans here at Bethany Church, the Transformation Church of New Jersey. Let's go back to Daniel chapter 3. Can y'all give me about 30 minutes? Can you do? I got some important stuff to show you. Amen? Okay. While you're turning to Daniel chapter 3, for those of you who are, are guests and are unaccustomed to seeing an altar call uh, before preaching, uh, the limitation to an altar call after preaching is a tradition, not a biblical mandate. Uh, the Bible does not prescribe when to fish. But the Bible does let us know that um, if a fisherman goes out all night and comes back and catches nothing, they, st they still call him or her a fisherman. Amen. Because they went at the right time. Jesus comes along and Luke 5 says, I need you to do it at the wrong time and on the other side of the boat. So what you've just witnessed is the wrong time and the other side of the boat. The Bible says they caught fish so much so that the net broke. So the traditional time to do it only after you finish preaching is a safe time to fail. But when you're moving in faith, you move at a time that God has told you to move because he's already planted something for you to catch. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This, this thing is by faith. Another reason we stand, the collective faith of God's house. The expectation is we don't come together and nobody gets saved. It's just, we just believe God. Amen. That's why it's good to bring your unsaved relatives to Bethany. Amen. Get them in the right water. Amen. Get them in the right water. Daniel chapter 3. Are you there yet? Okay. Let's go down to verse 19 just to refresh our memories. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage, I mean his face, displayed his anger. The form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So he was smiling at everybody else, but he wasn't smiling at them anymore. Therefore he spake and commanded they should heat the furnace one seven times or seven times more than it was wont or normally heated. So that it was already hot, but he said, I need you to heat it up seven times hotter than it normally is. He commanded the most mighty men. He got the baddest boys around him that were in the army. You see that? To bind, that means to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. These men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were bound in their coats, so they took their coats off, their stockings or their socks off, their turbans off, and their drawers off. It says other garments. That means underwear. Okay. And they tied them up with their own stuff. I don't have time to tell you what the devil wants to do is bind your mind. Okay. So you don't know. So, so you can't think. Bind your hands so you can't work. Bind your feet so you can't move. Tie you up with your drawers. So you forget what feeling and intimacy and loving is all about tied them up, threw them in the fire. Now watch how this works. Hmm. So they were cast into the midst, right in the middle of the burning fire furnace. Somebody say the hottest part. The hottest part. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So when they opened the door, them that tied them up, died. 
Y'all don't understand. So the heat killed the people trying to put them in the fire. So then how did they get in? They had enough faith. Then they fell down mm-hmm. in the midst of the fire. Mm-hmm. This is the part I like. Yeah. What, what's this now? We're just reading the scripture, getting ready to tell you some stuff. Look at this now. You still with me? Yeah. 22, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the fruit is exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 23, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. <laughs> I said Negro, didn't I? <laughs> I know who's sitting up in here. I can't. Okay. <laughs> Fell down. Still bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, rose up in haste, spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, then why in the world do I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of God Jesus will never let you go into a fire that he's not standing in before you get there. You gotta know him. Who throws you in the trap will be killed by the trap, but because Jesus is there before you went in, you will survive. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor it's time to be free. We're in our series called Unlimited You. And that series is focusing us over the next few weeks on the Holy Spirit. I told you we are not going to get caught up in words whether you want to call the Spirit of God Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. I just need you to know him no matter what you call him. Some may be sophisticated and say the Holy Spirit That's wonderful. But since I'm from the projects, I like Holy Ghost. Seems seems to have more oomph to it, Holy Ghost, yeah. And we, (laughs) Shay's like, I gotta pray for my pastor, boy. (laughs) We talked last week about how the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, is the third person in the Godhead. And that the Godhead consists of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Godhead, which makes Jesus the second and God the first. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. We corrected some terminology last week and said, Trinity is the wrong word for what we're describing as the Godhead. The Godhead is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So Trinity indicates three separate people. So the correct, the correct term for us to use, because we're talking about the three in one, is triune. Can you say that? Triune. Triune translates three in one. Tri, three, un, one. Triune. You got it? 
The Holy Spirit, therefore, had to be given to us because God had to have an um, incorruptible connection to human beings. Uh -huh. So the Holy Spirit becomes, if you will, the mediator once Jesus goes back, because when Jesus is here, he's the face of the Spirit. He's the face of God. He's the physical representation of God, the physical representation of God, the physical representation of God on earth. I'm going to let that sink. So Jesus, this man, became the physical representation of God on earth. So when Jesus was here, he was the mediator between God and humanity. Am I making sense? Watch how this works now. So, so, so Jesus then goes to the cross. He resurrects. He's now sitting at the right hand of the Father. But he said, I will not leave you without a comforter. Comforter means one who stands beside or walks beside you, or better, walks with you. So in the Old Testament, most of the saints, most of the saints had an external relationship with God. But in the New Testament, we have an internal relationship with God. And the only way God can get inside us is to give us his spirit. Right, now let me show you how this looks now. So the Bible lets us know that this three-in-one, I demonstrated to you last week, Brother Rich helped me out. We talked about the fact that he was a father, a son, and a man. And no matter what he was doing, he was no less that in any form. That when he went to see his mother, he was a son. When he talked to his children, you got it? When he goes to work, since he's in charge, he is a man. But he's never not all three of those. Did you get it? All right, let me show you something now. Let me show you something. So, so let's, let's, let's take a look, and I'll show you how this works. So if the Holy Spirit is our connection, say connection, connection. between God and us, okay, because now Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God, on the throne, talking to God about us 24-7. Yes. So I'm glad he likes his job, and I'm glad he likes overtime. Because yes. we obviously keep him busy yes. trying to keep God off of us. Yes. He ain't just up there talking about answer their prayers. Yes. He's up there talking about don't kill him yet. I'm still working with him. Don't... don't, don't don't, don't, don't mess them up. Don't, I know they're worthy of it, but you keep them alive because they're starting to get better. Somebody say, thank God for that. Because Jesus is our intercessor. All right, watch this, deep Christians. Intercessors are intercessors, pure intercessors, because they don't mind praying for people to receive what they don't deserve. Jesus is living to make intercession for us, praying for us to receive not so much what we do deserve, because we don't need an intercessor for that. He's praying we get what we don't deserve. And the book says he lives to do that. That's how this works. So, so um, Rich, do me a favor. He gonna be God today. Go, go up here. Yeah, go right there, right there. And, and Chandler and Ray, come here, please. All right, go up a little further, Rich. Stand, no, stay right there. Give me that. Give me your hand. Give me yours. All right. Okay, Rich, give me yours. The children are us, the father's up here, but we need a connection called the Holy Ghost. Did you get that? He can answer our prayers, hear our prayers, he can work through us because of the connection. All right, thank you, thank you. That's how this works. Now, watch, did you see it? 
All right. So now that you got the Holy Ghost, because you're saved. Somebody say, I'm connected. I'm connected. Okay. So now the power of God comes from him through you to whatever you're praying about. Am I making sense to you? I'm glad you have the Holy Ghost. But you need to know how to have a cooperative relationship with him. Because it's not that God doesn't want to deliver. It's sometimes we muddy up the works. But I'm glad every child of God is connected to God by his spirit. You got it. All right, now, so Jesus comes along, and he says something outrageous. He said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, you're looking at God walking around on two feet. So Jesus was the first, how you feeling? All right, Jesus was the first fully human being. I knew it was going to get quiet. You think God sent him down here half human? He was all God and 100% human being at the same time. Let me show you why. Go to Colossians. Did I lose you? Go to Colossians. We're going to go to chapter 2. Let me know when you get there. Okay. Colossians chapter 2. Let me know when you get there. Verse 8 says, beware lest any individual spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Watch this. After or according to the traditions of people. After the rudiments or the habits or the flow of the world and not after Christ. Watch this. For in him, Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. What's the last word? What's the word? So the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, in all its fullness, dwelled in Jesus Christ. And it said, not just spirit, but... Y'all not getting it. So all of God, all of Christ, all of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus. Am I making sense to anybody? Now the reason he's able to do that, because when he saved you, he changed you from a mere body to a temple. He lives in temples. Are you still with me? And now watch this. So, so, so now you're saved, right? And you know you got the Holy Ghost, right? Yeah. All right, let me show you something now. Let me show you something. Go, so, 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 mm, 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 mm. Go to chapter one. I'm so excited to show you all this stuff. I can't, but I'm beside myself. Because I know what's going to happen to you after this. Because God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think. Watch this according to the working of his power. Yes. So when you understand your relationship with God and his spirit, you will be able to allow him to do exceeding and abundantly above all you could ask or think because the Holy Ghost wants to make you the unlimited you. Somebody say no limits. Say it like you mean it, no limits. no limits. I didn't tell you to talk to anybody because I want you to talk to you. Say no limits. No limits. Nothing will be impossible if you believe. Watch, watch, watch how this works now. Watch how this works. Mm -hmm. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9, are you there? Ooh. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire 
that you might be filled. Now, let's talk about that word for a minute. When you see the word filled in the New Testament, it means to come under the control of. So when, when they were in the upper room and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, they came under the control of God by way of his spirit. Right. So, so, so you don't run out of gas by Wednesday. I know what they meant when they taught us this. You know, they told us we need to come to church midweek yes, sir. because you need to be filled again. Yes, sir. Like you sprung a leak yes, between Sunday. Yes, that can't be possible because the Bible says, he says, I'll never leave you, yes, nor will I forsake you. Amen. And he's not just talking about part of him, he's talking about all of him. Yes. All right, watch where we go now. Okay, I'm messing with you, I realize it. My grandmama taught me some stuff. I understand her motivation was right, yes, but she was dead wrong. <laughs> she only taught me what she was taught. I didn't say she was, you know, she was saved sure enough. She taught me how to pray now. She just, she just wasn't, you know, she just didn't know all this. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, and did not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Yield yourself to the knowledge of his will for you in all wisdom, that's knowledge put in practice, and spiritual understanding. Hmm. That you might walk worthy of the Lord under all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Hmm. So when we look at this thing about the Godhead, the Bible tells us that Christ is now in you, and he's the hope of glory. It means that hopefully in our lives, his glory will be revealed by our relationship with him. Uh -huh. But he can't get here without the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Don't let anybody who's saved tell you that you can be authentically saved and not have the Spirit of God. Amen. 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 If we could change ourselves, Christ would not have had to die on the cross. Yeah. We would not have needed the Holy Ghost if we could transform our own mind. Is this making sense to anybody? All right, watch how this works now. Stay with me. Stay with me. There was something else I wanted to show you, but it'll come to me in a second. Go to Matthew, ch Mark chapter 4. Go to Mark chapter 4. Is Pastor Nick down here somewhere? Is he upstairs? Mark chapter 4. When you get there, say amen. amen. All right, now I want you to go down to verse 11. I want to show you something. So we understand that glory appears outwardly so unbelievers can see Christ through us. His life through his glory on us. All right now, so this whole Christ in us thing is a, is a dilemma for a lot of people because it sounds kind of spooky. Amen. You know, and, and it's mysterious, but it's not spooky. Yeah. All right. So, 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 the problem is, how? Okay, I'm out of time. So, how do you get all of God into this brother right here, into this sister right here? Now we know the Bible just taught us that in Christ dwell the Godhead bodily that God fixed his spirit so that all of him could dwell in a body who happened to be named Jesus. So you got all of God in this man named Jesus. And then the Bible tells us to be Christ-like or like Christ. Hmm. 
So, so, so here's, here's the deal. So, so, so where God is, mm -hmm. to my Godhead now, mm -hmm. Jesus is. Yeah. You can't have one without the other. Where Jesus is, the Holy Ghost is. Can't have one. That ain't the good part. That ain't the good part. <laughs> Just the part I've been waiting. So, so it's things a mystery. Amen. So, so, so the Bible says in Mark chapter 4, verse 11, it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. I'm not hiding it from you. Yeah. All right. Now, do we all agree? Yeah. Watch this. Do we all agree that God is a spirit? Yeah. Yeah. And we need to be glad that he is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I don't want him busy in L.A. All right. And he can't handle my business in New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. So he got to be everywhere yeah. at the same time. Because yeah. God is a spirit. Yeah. Okay. Everybody good? Okay. You got it? Yes. All right, yeah, God is a spirit. So he everywhere. He everywhere at the same time. So if God is in Christ, Holy Ghost is in Christ, and Christ has a body. God is a king. So his kingdom is where he is. So now, in Jesus Christ's body was God, Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the kingdom. And then the Bible says in red writing, it's given to you to know the mystery of the kingdom. In other words, how's all that? In this little woman right here. Yeah. Hot dog, I'm ready to tell you. Okay. That's it. So, all right, so, so, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. I'm excited about this thing. Come on, Bishop. Come on. I'm excited. Yes, sir. Check this out. Check this out. So, 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 God is a spirit. Yeah. Yes, sir. So the world is full of oxygen. That same oxygen is in your house. Yes, yes. Nothing lacking in it. All the same oxygen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Came into this church. Yes. Same oxygen that's in the atmosphere yes. is in this building right here. Yes. Then God messes around, and calls you a house. Come on, Bishop. Come on. Same oxygen. Yeah. That's in the universe. Much bigger place. Yeah. Same oxygen that's in your house. Yeah. Same oxygen that's in this building yeah. is the same oxygen that's in you. Because yeah. Come on. Come on. God is a spirit. Amen. So he puts all of him yeah. in you and I. Hallelujah. That's how he fits. Because yeah. he's like oxygen. I told you, they call him the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call him the breath of God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, they call him the wind. Ooh, Hallelujah. they call him the wind Hallelujah. of God. They call him the breath of the Holy Hallelujah. Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Same God in Jesus is the same God in you because of the Holy Ghost. You're going to watch your worship change during this series. Because it said the only way you can do it right is spirit and in truth. Know who God is for real and have the connection of the Holy Ghost. Thank God. I got good news. 
and I got bad news. All right, let me show you one more scripture, then we'll go. You need this one to put a stamp on today's understanding. Go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. And y'all stand up so I'll stop. Okay, amen. Y'all be obedient. Stand up so I'll stop. Y'all say, I ain't standing up. (laughs) Thank you. Luke chapter 4. Everybody got it, yeah? All right, we need to go down to... um, Oh, I'm sorry, Mark 4. Okay, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm glad I put my glasses on so I could see. Mark chapter 4. All right, we're there. That's the mystery of the kingdom. All right. All right. Luke chapter 4. I got your mark? All right, that's going to take me too long. Go to Luke. I'll go back to Mark next week. Luke 4, 17. Do you have it? And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, He found the place where it was written. So Jesus goes to the synagogue. They hand him what we would call a Bible. They hand him the record. And Jesus opens up to the place where they're talking about him. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me, empowered me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has set me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to recover sight to the blind, to set them that li- at liberty that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book, gave it again to the minister, and sat down. The eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. They couldn't take their eyes off him. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your hearing. Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, you have the Almighty God dwelling in you. I got good news for you and I have challenging news for you. The Spirit can only do in you what you allow Him to do. There are some things that God has promised Himself for you that are dependent upon our cooperative relationship with the Holy Ghost. Over the next few weeks, I'm not going to teach you to respond to the chills that you feel. I need you to know the Holy Ghost for yourself and know how to respond to him. Because I've got some real good news for you. For those of you who haven't gotten... um, the, uh, the message on the eclipse and the earthquakes and the jewels. You need to get that and maybe look at that this afternoon. Um, it's called uh, Leap Years, Earthquakes, and Eclipses. You need to know that 2024, because it's a leap year, is a pregnant year. That if you will allow God to guide you, He will birth those things that the year is pregnant for you. He's got some stuff that's in the oven for you that he wants you to have. But we've got to cooperate with him. How do I do that? You don't have to get spooky. You don't have to wait for a chill. You 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 don't have to do crazy stuff like a bird flew across the car. Was God trying to tell me? No. Jesus says, my words are spirit, and they are life. 
So we learn the Bible to learn how God moves by his spirit. Something fundamental. When, Jesus, when God gets ready to create, the Holy Ghost is waiting, but the Holy Ghost doesn't move until God speaks. So, God is looking at what looks like confusion, and it looks like nobody can fix it, but God knows he can. So the Holy Ghost positions himself over whatever has God's attention. I need you to look at your neighbor right now. Don't say a word. I don't need you distracted. I need you looking at them. The focus of your attention. You don't need to know what needs to be fixed. But you do need to understand you're made in the image and likeness of God. And that image and likeness is activated by the Holy Ghost. They got your attention? They already have the Holy Ghost. So now the Holy Spirit is just waiting for a word from you. Repeat after me. I don't know what it is. But I know who knows. In the name of Jesus. By the power of his word. And the Holy Spirit. Whatever it is. It's fixed. Now. In Jesus name. Now you ought to be praising God right there. Holy Ghost is moving right now. Holy Ghost is moving right now. In that body. In that heart, in that mind, Holy Ghost is moving right now. Healing is happening right now. Deliverance is happening right now, right now, right now, right now. Hallelujah. It's all right to praise him. If you receive the blessing, show some sign. If you received it, shout hallelujah. Holy Ghost is moving right now. Holy Spirit moving right now. Hallelujah. We hope you enjoyed that message from Bishop David G. Evans here at Bethany Church, the Transformation Church of New Jersey. We believe that it was thought-provoking, but also something that could penetrate your heart and your mind and cause a radical transformation. Please do us a favor before you go and like, share, and subscribe uh, on all of our platforms, David G. Evans 1, as well as BBC Evangel on YouTube, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you want to be engaged with the content that God is using this ministry to produce. And as you feel led to, as in the sermon, you can also sow into this. We believe in sowing into the message, into what God has spoken into us, because we believe that that seed confirms that. And we trust and believe that God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. The information is on the screen. There's also a link in the comment section. Uh, and you can sow into your future with a heart of worship and a heart of praise. Again, we're so glad you joined us today for another wonderful message here at Bethany Church of Transformation Church of New Jersey. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.